The Room has been called the Citizen Kane of bad movies. <laughs> it came out June 27th, 2003. How long did it take you to kind of to, to embrace it? Were you because I, I think you have a really great attitude about everything. Um, were you were you kind of always this way or did you did you come around on it? I was always fascinated from the beginning. I mean, to me, for me, the room was like an experiment on human beings because I met Tommy in an acting class like four years before the room was even filmed. And I like, it went beyond acting. I was just really intrigued by this character. Um, you know, he, he didn't really care what people thought. He presented himself in a way that he didn't really have quite a touch of what he was and he didn't care. And so, you know, I was 19 and I thought there's something about this guy I, I'm fascinated by, I wanna know more about. And so when we struck up this friendship, um, it was very liberating for me because I needed more of that in my life. I needed to stop second guessing myself and starting, you know, believe in myself more. And he, there was no rules with Tommy. So when he decided like to do the traditional route and send in headshots to agents and casting directors and didn't get a response, you know, which was their loss. <laughs> they didn't, they didn't see the, the Brando-esque qualities he had. He decided he was going to go make his own film. So right away when we entered that professional like realm of trying to make a, make a movie, it was so fun for me because I got to see the Tommy that I knew and appreciated now working in sort of a confi confined environment. And it was just complete chaos. So my thought was, what's an audience going to think, a normal audience, when they see this movie? I didn't think it would ever happen because who would ever pay to watch this film? Um, and so when people would see it, I would ask them, like, what do you think of this? What, is, what does this make you feel? What do you think of this guy? And I got that early on when I showed the dailies and the rough cut to my family way before it ever was finished. And my dad, I've never seen my dad laugh harder. Like he only wow. Seinfeld and these other comedy shows. And he just thought it was the funniest thing. So when people started watching it and talking about it, I just thought it was absolutely hilarious. I mean, it wasn't a movie I would ever show professionally or show a date if I had a girl over. It was always something that I just was intrigued what normal minded people thought of this. And, and I got like all these film students that would say why they liked it. And a lot of it added up to what I saw in Tommy in that acting class. There was just something chaotic and really fun. There was, it was, there was so much comedic talent there that he didn't even realize that he had, and that made it really interesting. And so I never really was embarrassed by it. I was always more fascinated by it. So when people started seeing it and wanting more, I would share stories about the making of the film. And they're like, we just want, like, we need to know more. How did you, how did this happen? And that's where I got the idea to write the book because I thought what a great challenge write us write the story behind the making of the citizen Kane of bad movies and then have that story be made into a good film because I feel like that's a great way to, to turn the tables so as you were writing the book you had you had a film in mind even as you were writing oh yeah from the, okay. from the get go the idea was this book was going to be like an Ed Wood Sunset Boulevard Boogie Nights like I went into it thinking this has to be a character story um between these two friends because not many people are going to want to read about the making of a bad movie, but they're going to, going to want to read about a really screwball friendship that sort of in its own way succeeds against all odds. I think that's all a story that we, you know, the public can relate to. When you guys were in acting class together and I, um, I haven't done any acting classes, but I did five years of improv, which, so I have like a sense of the, of the people that are in like acting classes. And it's like that who you connect with, like right away, uh, it's kind of, it's kind of like you're bonded. Was, were you the only one he really kind of connected with in that class? You know, and I, and I wonder if anybody else in the class is now looking at you being like, Oh man, I should have been nicer to the weird guy. I could have been in the movie. Yeah, no, I, um, uh, I know people just didn't get it. They were all like, he'd argue with the teacher and he'd be like, I'm, I'm so sorry. You know, you may I correct you? <laughs> and everyone was like, Oh damn. Like, they were sort of put off and sort of scared by it. But I thought, I like this guy. He's not just having the teacher tell him what to do. He's got his own opinion. And uh, again, I thought it was hilarious. People didn't quite get the comedy yet. And I thought, hey, my mom's French. Uh, French was my first language. I grew up around accents. And this was like the home run of accents. And I was like, I like this guy. And you couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't figure out where he 
I mean, are you? Are, do you really know where he's from, or is it still a mystery? I mean, I know, I know quite a bit, but I feel like it's it's so much better to to keep, keep it a mystery mm -hmm. because, like, I've always been obsessed with, you know, like the Zodiac case and these other things. It's like the reason I love these so much is we don't know, and and you can keep guessing forever and go down this alley. So with Tommy, so many people have their own. Um, theory up to who he is and i think um it's, it's almost better to let them let them have that like is he db cooper is he a croatian cyborg from the future like we will never know <laughs> oh that's good I'm, that's good that he trusts you with his secret um which line from the movie uh is the most is the most annoying or like to hear quoted back to you you know, I, again, that's the thing. Like people with the, with the room, they always like, dude, you must be so sick of it. Like you must be so annoyed. And it's like, honestly, like if you guys are sick of it, then I'm not because it's one of those things like you make movies for fans and if people want to still talk about and quote this movie 20 years later. I think it's <laughs> hilarious. And, um, you know, I nothing about it really, um, really annoyed. Like people will be like, oh my God, you must be so sick of hearing, oh, hi, Mark. And it's like, Dude, if I walked up to somebody in a cult movie that I loved, I'd do the exact same thing. So I can't judge you guys. Okay. The sex, so okay, the sex scenes are something that I refuse to watch. Mm -hmm. Even though I have my jeans on through all of them, because that's how sex scenes work. You wear your pants during them. Um, I can't watch a frame of that. It's so uncomfortable. The 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 ADR we did for those where I'm like, oh, it's just, it comes in at such a weird time. It's so awkward. What does EDR stand for? So when a film gets made, I guess it's additional dialogue recording, but when you don't have dialogue that works in a movie recorded after. So you sit in the booth and you watch the scene and you fill in holes in the scene. So for those sex scenes, Tommy's like, we need passion. He's so dull. So he had me record like sounds that I do if I was making out with <laughs> his future wife. And so I had to add those in. He's like, it's so boring. You got to give more. So I was like, all right, I'll give him what he wants. And I went over the top and figured again, no one would ever see this movie. So now when you watch it with a crowd, all you hear are those moaning sounds that sound so fake and awkward. And it's just, it's so uncomfortable, but you know, the R and B songs aren't bad. So I guess it works. <laughs> okay. So you don't have a most annoying line. Do you have a favorite line or a line that even still today makes you laugh? I would probably say, um, you know, for my line that I think is funny is people are very strange these days because it kind of works now. I mean, it's just it's something that's nobody would say, but it's still kind of puts in. Uh, and then I think Ta uh, Johnny's line where he's like, I'm fed up with this world. Well, honestly, Johnny's lines, if you break them down, you could talk in room quotes all day long and get your points across. Like I've had oh, friends wow. that do that where they just like, they're going through a rough day and they just quote room lines to communicate and like it oddly works. So I don't know why it's so quotable, but um, you know, obviously you're tearing me apart. Um, anything from my, anything from my princess is pretty good. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. I don't know why it's so quotable. It's bizarre. Yeah. I, I always say like, <laughs> I find myself going, hi doggy. Every time I see a dog. And I like you're my favorite customer. <laughs> yeah, that scene is insane. That was the last thing we ever shot on the room. So we shooting in San Francisco was like a last minute thing that Tommy came up with because that night I had just broken up with my girlfriend. Oh um, no. I was like, it was like my first breakup and I was just in shock. And I was like, did I like mess up doing this movie? Did I like make the wrong decision? And now all of a sudden, like, I didn't know what to think. And so I sit down with Tommy and he sees I'm upset and he says, he says, Oh my God, don't, don't worry about it. You have hundred girls. It's okay. Uh, and then he saw that, that, that advice didn't work. And then he's like, why don't we do scene in San Francisco where we talk about your sex life? We talk about life. And so all of a sudden like that breakup came up with the, like ideas to shoot scenes in San Francisco. And one of them was the flower shop scene, which we pulled up to uh, in mission on mission street. And, and Tommy walked in there and he's like, Hey guys, I have a proposal for you. We buy flowers, we shoot movie, you act in movie. And they're like, huh? And so they um, they agreed to do it. And on the very last take we shot for the room, he noticed the dog and he's like, so cute. My God, is your dog real thing? <laughs> and they're like, um, yeah, sure is. So we did it again. And then he's like, hi, doggy. And it was, I had no idea that that scene would 
would do what it did where people love it so much. But it, it's pretty funny to think back, like you're his favorite customer, but you don't recognize him because he's got sunglasses on. Like it's just, a, it's just a perfect scene. I mean, you can only, you, you only get maybe one of those scenes in your entire life. So I'm, I'm really glad it involved that one. It is funny because like the feeling is just that like any customer is your yeah. favorite customer. Like whoever comes in is her favorite customer. And like he's just does did he know like does he know that he's funny? Again, I feel like he's one of these unintentionally he's a character. And so he's funny without like telling jokes per se. He's just like a funny person. Like, did he was he trying to make the movie funny or it just no, became I mean, he just has a viewpoint of life that's very different and uh that's what makes him unique. And that's what I feel like I'd like to see more of from him is him just being his authentic self. As soon as you try to be funny, then it's like it doesn't quite work. But what was so funny about that scene is we literally just pulled up to a flower shop with a camera and a sound person and filmed. And it's like, I feel like so many people might be sitting on cinematic gold in their life, but they're just not <laughs> filming it. And that's, um, and that's what we did. Like he, you know, I think he just has a unique way of life. He had creative control so he could make the film exactly the way he wanted to. And that doesn't happen very often. And then you, you know, couple that with this script that, is one of the most insane things ever written and you have something, you know, like the room.